Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we will learn a new concept, uh, perhaps the, not the last, but the second last concept, okay, related to binomial theorem. And this is, how do we find the coefficient of x when x is in both terms? So in the last couple of videos, we've learned what to do when x is in the first term, we've learned what to do when x is in, in the second term, and in the last video, we looked at some exceptions. So in this video, we will see how we can find out the coefficient of x square, x to the power, whatever, uh, when you have x in both the terms, okay? And as always, we learn this with the help of an example question. So we have, an, uh, we have a question over here. It says, find the coefficient of x. So by just x, it means x power one in the expansion of x minus three upon x to the power five. So the idea remains the same, that how do we find the value of r, which we can then use to find out whatever it is that we have to find, okay? And how exactly, if, if once we know the value of r, which will, which will then eventually help us find the coefficient of x raised to whatever power, we can then use that and immediately find out the, find out the coefficient. The other way would be, uh, the longer way obviously would be to first expand the entire thing and then just pick out the coefficient of x in this case. Okay, but obviously we don't want to do that. So how do we do that? Okay, so this is how it works. So without knowing the value of r, this is what this will look like. 5cr x raised to the power of 5 minus r minus 3 upon x to the power of r. Okay. Now, once you've written this down, remember the objective should be clear. The objective is that we're looking for the value of r. Okay. The next thing we do is, is that we ignore everything that does not involve x. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? By that, I mean we ignore 5cr temporarily, of course, not permanently okay we ignore 5 cr and for the same reason we ignore the minus 3 because it does not involve x okay so we're just fix we're just focused on all the terms that have x in them okay or just x that's what we're focused on and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set this equal to x and why x because that's what the coefficient of we're looking for we're looking for the coefficient of x which means coefficient of x bar one okay now what you want to do is here we're going to be using rules of indices, okay? So x raised to the power 5 minus r. And what happens if we move this x in the numerator? So this becomes x to the power minus 1. And don't forget that this is still raised to the power of r, which is now equal to x power 1, okay? So what are we looking at now? We're looking at x to the power 5 minus r into x to the power minus r, which is equal to x to the power 1, okay? Now we're going to solve this, okay, using our knowledge of indices. And then we're going to use this to determine the value of r. And then we're going to plug that value of r back into this formula right here. And if that value of r is correct, if all everything that we have done so far is correct, we should end up with the coefficient of x. So let's see what happens. So same bases are being multiplied. That means the power is going to be added. So x to the power 5 minus r plus minus r we're adding if as a result, as a result of the minus sign, they get subtracted. That's really not our problem is equal to x to the power one. So we ignore the bases because they're the same and we compare the powers. So we're looking at five minus two r is equals to one. Let's solve this. So four is equals to two r. Let's write this nicely. Two r equals to four, which means r is equals to two. Okay, now that you have the value of r, this should help us find the coefficient of x. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna plug in two in place of r, five c two, x raised to the power five minus two, which is three and minus three upon x raised to the power of two. Now, if you've done everything correctly, towards the end, we should end up with the coefficient of x. By that, I mean the power of x should reduce to one, okay? Let's see if that's the case or not. So five C two is 10, okay? X to the power three is x cubed into minus three squared is nine x squared is obviously x squared, okay? So 10 into nine is 90. So we have 90 x cubed over x squared and you can probably see where this is going. x cubed over x squared means x and we've ended up with 90 x. That means as far as the coefficient of x is concerned, that is just equal to 90. And that's it, we're done. So how did this work? Well, remember the value of r is what we're looking for. So you write down the formula without the value, with r as it is, of course, okay? And you scrape off whatever it is that involves x and you ignore everything else, okay? So we ignored this minus three and we took this x, moved it from the denominator to the numerator. That's why it became minus one. Solve this like you would solve any other equation that has same basis but different powers. Figure out the value of r and then eventually plug that value of r back into the equation to find out the coefficient of x. Now, if you've understood this, that's great. If you haven't, as always, nothing to worry about. There's another example that we're going to do. 
Okay, <clears throat> so this says find the term independent of x. Okay, so one thing that you should always remember is that the term, whenever the question says the term independent of x, that means x to the power is zero, okay? Because x to the power zero is as good as not having x at all because x power zero is equal to one, okay? So again, what's the objective? What are we really looking for? We're really looking, we're just looking for the value of r, which we can use in the formula to find out the term that's independent of x. Okay, so if you don't know the value of r, this is what it's gonna look like, 60 r x squared raised to the power 6 minus r into 1 upon 2x to the power r. And this we're going to set it equal to, I mean, you don't really have to do it now. You could have done this in the next step, but this we want to be equal to x bar 0. Okay. So what are we going to ignore? We're going to ignore everything that does not have x in it. So we're going to ignore 6 e r. We're going to ignore this one. We're going to ignore this two. Okay. So this becomes x to the power 12 minus 2r into x to the power minus r. So I've done this directly over here. We moved x from the denominator to the numerator. That's how it becomes minus one. And then minus one into r is minus r equals x bar zero. All right, same bases are being multiplied. That means the powers get added. So we're looking at x to the power 12 minus two r minus r equals to x to the power zero. So we ignore the bases, compare the powers. So 12 minus three r equals to zero, which means three r equals to 12, which means r is equals to four. Now at this point, don't get carried away and think that this is the end of the question because it's not, because we're gonna take this value, plug it back into the equation, uh, into the formula and find the term, hopefully end up with the term that's independent of x. That means all the powers of x should reduce it to zero. Let's see if that's the case or not. So 64 x squared raised to the power of six minus four, that means to the power of two and one upon two x to the power of r, which is equal to four. Okay, so this looks promising. 64 is equal to 15 into x to the power four into two to the power four is 16 and x to the power four is x power four. And yes, this is indeed promising. So x power four and x power four gets canceled out. Okay, that's not a coincidence. That is what should have happened given that our value of r is correct, which thankfully it is now we can tell. And we're left with 15 upon 16, and this is the term that's independent of x. So uh, that's it. This was the second loss concept that's related to um, binomial theorem, and I hope you've understood this. And that's that's it for this video. In the next video, we will learn the very last concept before we do post paper questions, of course, and that is how do you expand NCR without a calculator? Because there are some questions in which you will have to, you're not gonna be given the value of N, and you will have to work it out using without using a calculator actually. So uh, like I said, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, bye-bye.